Tinggal sebentar di anjung patu Tangan diangkat, jari dirapat Doa dipanjat, memohon restu Bagi memberkati majlis kita pada malam ini Majlis dengan perantakzimnya Menjumpa saudara Ahmad Muaz bin Syamsuddin Untuk memimpin bacaan doa Dipersilakan Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Ya Allah ya Rahman ya Rahim Kami memohon kepadamu Agar engkau berkatilah majlis ini Dengan limpahan rahmatmu Semoga segala usaha kami dalam menjayakan majlis ini mendapat kerudaan dan hidayahmu Berkati dan rahmatilah ke atas majlis kami Iaitu program A Beautiful Mind Insight Yang diadakan pada malam ini Ya Allah Ya Azza Jalal Walikram Kuniakanlah apa kiranya kepada kami Kesihatan anggota, kecegasan minda, ketenangan jiwa dan kekuatan semangat Engkau hindarilah kami dari segala wabak yang sedang melanda negara ini Dan juga Dari segala penyakit berbahaya yang lain Semoga dengannya Kami mampu menghadapi cabaran Dan mampu mengangkat matabat diri Keluarga Masyarakat Dan negara Ya Allah Jadikanlah pertemuan ini Sebagai pertemuan yang ber diberkati dan dirahmati Kami juga memohon pindunganmu Dari segala perkara yang boleh mencecat celaka majlis kami Hanya kepadamu sahajalah kami memohon Rabbana atina fi dunia hasana Wa fil akhirati hasana Wa khina azab al-nar Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Amin amin ya rabbal alamin. Terima kasih di atas bacaan doa sebentar tadi. Semoga majlis kita pada malam ini mendapat rahmat dan berkat darinya. Hadirin sekalian, tujuan kita berhimpun pada malam ini adalah untuk mendengar taklimat berkenaan A Beautiful Mind Anxiety yang akan disampaikan oleh penceramah jemputan iaitu Puan Syamimi Budi Amirudin. Program ini dianjurkan adalah untuk memupuk kesedaran tentang kesihatan mental yang sukar dikenal pasti dalam kalangan pelajar. Sebelum kita memulakan takliman, izinkan saya untuk memperkenalkan sedikit sebanyak latar belakang penceramah kita pada malam ini. Beliau dikenali sebagai Puan Syamibi binti Amiruddin yang berkelulusan, maaf, yang berkelulusan apa Iowa University pada tahun 2015 sehingga 2018 di dalam bidang American Degree Program Ijazah Sarjana Muda Sains dengan Kepujian Psikologi dan Komunikasi Seterusnya, beliau meneruskan pengajian di University Sains Malaysia University Pendidikan Sultan Idris dan memperoleh kelulusan Ijazah Sarjana Psikologi Klinikal Untuk maklumat para hadirin, beliau mempunyai kepakaran di dalam pengurusan penilaian psikologi termasuk neuropsikologi Kognitif, penilaian personaliti, tingkah laku dan mood Tambahan pula, beliau juga pernah berkhidmat di Pusat Psikologi dan Rehabilitasi Atfal Jannah dan Hospital Sultan Abdullah UITM Puncak Alam pada tahun 2022 Terdapat banyak program yang telah beliau kendalikan sewaktu berkhidmat di sana Dan kini, beliau merupakan pakar psikologi klinikal di BP Healthcare Specialist Centre dan minda kami Tanpa membuang masa lagi Marilah kita bersama-sama memberi perhatian dan mengambil segala ilmu atau nasihat yang diberikan sepanjang beliau mengendalikan takliman pada malam ini. Dengan ini, majlis menjemput Puan Syamimi binti Amiruddin untuk menyampaikan takliman beliau. Dengan segala hormatnya, majlis mempersilakan.
saya dalam suicide Tak kira eh Dan lepas tu, uh, 
saya terus buat masters dan saya sekarang kerja pun dengan special needs juga sebenarnya so on top of the two works yang saya kerja tadi yang sebagai visiting specialist dekat BP and uh, clinical psychologist dekat Minda kami saya juga adalah seorang clinical director dekat satu special needs center so dekat situ saya jumpa kanak-kanak not only on the spot but on the spectrum um, kids um, Down syndrome, ADHD Um, cerebral palsy, SLD, uh, specific learning disorder dan as a whole lah saya jumpa all range of psychological condition dan patient yang saya jumpa pun as young as 2 years old dan paling tua saya jumpa last week was what, 86 years old yang ada di Malaysia dan saya was, it's fun actually, being in this field is fun sebab you can you get to see everyone and then you boleh get to know people more details but it can get scary as well sebab when people tell you, oh you buat apa macam ni So I tell them why I'm actually a CP, a short form for clinical psychologist, they're like, so you can read our mind. So then I just said, yeah, I do read your mind. I said, so I said, okay, what am I thinking? I said, so I said, lah, um, you're probably thinking that I can read your mind. <laughs> so they're like, oh my god, that's why you are a CP. So I'm like, yeah, kan, best kan. Anyways. <laughs> I don't want to hold you guys for too long sebab so talk me for 2 hours kan so I don't want to go for 3 hours and saya pun kita jauh bercakap pun nak cakap sebenarnya ok so today's topic kita akan bercakap pasal anxiety so I think you guys have heard this this term before maybe korang rasa macam eh aku anxious lah apa ada paper besok aku tak study lagi apa pun aku kerja tu kan ataupun korang ada presentation ke besok macam aku, aku tak prepare apa lagi points aku untuk aku kembali I'm so anxious how am I going to do it what if I embarrass myself you know lebih boleh macam tu and I think on social media juga korang boleh nampak people are more aware of um, psychological conditions seperti depression, anxiety um, I think now pun parents are also very aware of autism, ADHD kan and because of that juga people dah start to seek for treatment mereka pun dah start take more um, apa, take more care of their mental health sebelum ni kan kita macam tak tahu kan sebab kita rasa macam oh this is nothing and we just brush it off kita macam buat bodoh je tapi sebenarnya it is something for us so lebih pun macam tu saya hari ni saya nak tekatkan how important it is for us to be aware of our mental health because kadang-kadang bila kita terlampau overwhelmed dengan kerja kita kita tak sedar yang it's actually affecting us it could be direct atau tak dan usually benda tu akan prolong you guys not feel it now benda tu akan add up every day bila kita stress and then at one point dia akan blow up so that's when you guys akan rasa macam kenapa suddenly I do benda ni semalam I was okay kenapa benda ni jadi so benda macam tu it's important some people might think that oh you're just overthinking it's all in your head um, benda macam ni tak ada lah uh, pergi solat ke and what not you know I'm sure some of you guys have heard before not gonna lie, so that does help, CK does help that I think to have to sort of to find another alternative which is sick for another treatment as well, betul tak? But I don't want to touch on that area lah sebab I am more into a science and psychology punya aspect but not to say I tak percaya benda tu, I don't believe in that So, I actually have something, this is next Okay, so this is a quote that I would like you guys to um, scan Please let me know kalau korang boleh masuk I have a, I have a thought, I have 
about this kind of activities? Can you help me scan? Dia pun macam, okay, okay, let me scan, let me scan. Okay, anyways, what is anxiety to you? Okay, anxiety is a bomb feeling to individual. Okay, anxious. Very straightforward, right? Risau, memang, exactly. Anxiety is something that you couldn't explain about. Yes. Sesat nafas, yeah, actually sesat nafas is one of the symptoms and I actually akan cakap more details with like that. Lapar pun actually boleh trigger your anxiety tau sebenarnya. Hmm, lapar, so jangan lapar ya. So it is sort of heart stopper feeling that not all can be described. So macam palpitation, you know macam jantung you berdebar. And ada sometimes you akan rasa macam, am I having heart attack or is it just panic attack? Ah, so benda macam tu lah. Eh banyak ni barang. Okay, so hi Komando Lokman. Who is Komando Lokman? I think somebody has a crush on you. Cantik. Oh, thank you. Cantik sini ke orang lain sebelah cantik tu? Oh, thank you. Panas? Ah, ni korang nak cakap dengan orang tu panas. Ah, lagi. Tangan menikir, yes, hand shaking. In fact, I am having hand shaking right now, so I never see that. Anxiety is kind of where the soul of me. I hate when it interferes with what I'm doing. Yes, sebenarnya anxiety ni, dia akan worsen if it affects the daily function. Which I'm going to explain more nanti in details. Extremely worried, betul. Dia extremely worried on satu, on more things. Shaking, betul. Perasaan takut, suffering like nervous, banyak assignment, betul. I do agree with that. Dulu masa saya buat masters pun, I think almost every day kot, I rasa actually dia sebab I tak tahu siap ni tak asal kenai Macam tu nak cabut, that's the red That's me right now Never experience it, so come here to know more Nice, siapa tu? Nanti kita have one to one talk, okay? Apa lagi? Banyak, basically you guys can get the idea of it So takut, nervous Ada some symptoms yang korang explain Seperti hand shaking lah Apa? Korang ada kedai buka ke? Bina ni? Kedai apa di ni ni? So, so you guys basically get the idea of it. Thank you so much for actually engaging today. This is my first time doing what we did yesterday. So thank you everyone. So now you guys dah get the idea of apa itu anxiety kan? So kita dah tahu secara maksudnya. So macam you guys get the idea of it and some of you guys even describe the symptoms of anxiety and even the meaning of anxiety. So today kita akan explore more in terms of what are the factors yang somebody boleh actually dapat anxiety and then second what are the treatment plans in terms of the medicine part, in terms of the psychotherapy part and in terms of the support punya part and sebagainya lah. Dan kita akan juga ada Q&A in between. Saya takkan cakap all the time. So, I just can stop and even ask you guys some questions. Dan towards the end of it, akan ada case study. Case study. Ada case study atau tak lah. Case study tu kita akan bincang sama-sama lah. And then akan juga ada quizzes. Quizzes tu, sorry lah saya tak ada bawa hadiah. Tapi quizzes tu, saya akan bagi affirmation lah kat korang. So, that should be one of the hadiah as well. Alright. So, next is the table of content. So, So, saya nak bagi expectations dekat korang Hari ni kita nak cakap pasal apa So, first kita akan cakap pasal anxiety disorders Second, kita akan cakap pasal What are the common symptoms of anxieties And then, what are the warning signs as well Warning signs tu macam red flags lah And then, what are the types of anxieties But anxiety disorders ni dia banyak sangat type sebenarnya And I won't go into details sangat sebab Kalau I nak go into details It would take more than 3 hours sebenarnya So, I can go into a very clinical aspect of it So, I'm just going to touch briefly about the types of anxiety dengan symptoms Next Number 5, what are the factors? Number 6 is how to seek for help And then 7, what are the coping skills? Then treatment plans lah And then number 9 is the case study Aisyah bukan nama sebenar Eh, siapa-siapa sini nama Aisyah? Saya minta maaf Tapi ini Aisyah bukan nama sebenar ya And then we have quiz time and then that's it, habis So kita akan ada Q&A lah So those are expectations for you guys So korang boleh tahu lah what's next, what's next, what's next, okay? 
Alright, first kita akan cakap pasal anxiety. So according to APA, um, sebenarnya nama panjang dia American Psychiatric Association. Anxiety ni is actually a normal response um, to stress and benda tu boleh bagi beneficial to some situations macam exams, uh, presentations, you know, going for interview untuk bekerja ke, untuk masuk study ke. Uh, sebab benda tu akan, sebab the stress akan helps us to put more attention and focus on the certain task. Okay? Tapi, the contrast ni adalah, anxiety disorders ni, they differ from temporary feelings of anxiousness or nervousness with more intense feelings of fear or anxiety. So, itu biasanya antara normal um, uh, good anxiety, I would say, and the unhealthy anxiety lah. Alright? So, next. So, this is where kita akan tahu dekat mana kita punya um, feelings tu sebenarnya dah pergi ke unhealthy part. So anxiety disorder ni, dia actually goes beyond the regular nervousness and then slight fear that you akan rasa from time to time. This sebenarnya you takkan perang, you takkan rasa terus on the spot tau. You rasa sikit, 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 sikit. Uh, so dia macam tu macam, it's actually very tricky sebab korang akan rasa macam tak ada apa-apa ni, tak ada apa-apa ni. Dalam lama dia akan build up. You know, it's it's similar lah bila korang kemas rumah, uh, mesti pernah buat ni. Uh, korang sapu das bawa bawa kapit kan? Dan korang rasa macam, mm, mak tak nampak ni. Tapi if korang buat everyday, benda tu akan bug. Betul tak? So that's where korang akan realize macam, oh man, habis laku. You know, benda macam tu. So it's similar like that lah. Alright, so an anxiety ni, disorder, dia terjadinya bila benda tu interfere, you punya ability to function in daily life. Contohnya tak boleh pergi kerja, tak pergi kelas, benda-benda yang you used to like dahulu tu, you dah tak suka dah. And then you akan avoid social situations Macam contoh kalau kawan you, kawan you ajak pergi tengok wayang ke You avoid macam tak nak lah, you wanna go out, you know And then uh, you often overreact when something triggers your emotions So usually, benda-benda kecil akan trigger you So tu ni macam um, Let's say if you are preparing for an exam Like a very important exam Tapi adik you duk tanya, eh mana baju aku, mana baju aku, mana baju aku So that annoys you kan, right? macam Aku kan, benda macam tu lah So, benda macam tu akan trigger your emotions And then, you tak boleh nak control your response to situations But tu ada sometimes, bila orang terlampau anxious Dia akan either um, burst out crying ke Atau dia lari ke, you know, masuk bilik ke Go somewhere safe untuk dia orang And then, anxiety disorder boleh buat awak akan rasa susah Untuk get through day every day So, benda tu akan hold you back, no matter macam mana korang nak go forward, benda tu akan rasa korang macam dia macam tarik korang ke belakang lah Okay, tapi ada several effective, uh, effective treatments untuk tackle each anxiety lah So that would I would discuss nanti towards the end of it, alright So next is The symptoms, so you might be wondering, okay, so I dah tahu apa ni anxiety So what are the symptoms that I have to be aware of? So sebenarnya banyak tau sebab each anxiety dia ada dia punya uh, symptoms yang same So macam general anxiety disorders, dia ada dia punya particular symptoms yang akan look into it Kalau uh, macam uh, social social anxiety, dia ada symptoms dia juga So ada kadang-kadang macam, in, dia macam apa nama ni? Collab together, uh, tapi ada juga yang macam tak collab juga Okay, so ada untuk kita orang is a clinical psychology. So bila kita buat assessment, um, I'm just going to tell you guys macam ni kita orang go through with the assessment ya. So first thing first is definitely kita akan build rapport relationship. So kita nak ambil kita nak bagi dia comfortable dengan kita, nak bagi dia trust dengan kita. So throughout the time kita akan buat some clinical interview. So kita in the interview ni saya akan tanya um, family history, you know, presenting history what triggers you, what brings you here dan sebagainya So from that, saya akan dapat tengok simptom-simptom yang cerita lah Could be something macam Saya tak nak pergi sekolah, saya tak nak, nak pergi kelas Kelas sometimes draining me Bila macam tu, simptom yang I, yang I keep an eye of it lah Okay, lepas tu nanti saya akan um, Saya akan bagi assessment, screening assessment I think some of you guys have heard before DAS Kan? Pernah dengar tak DAS? DAS 21 Pernah kan? Ada some, some pernah dengar, some tak pernah dengar kan? So, TAS is actually depression, anxiety, stress So, screen punya form di mana kita akan uh, screen to uh, individuals punya depression, stress and anxiety level So, dari situ kita boleh nampak lah, okay, you punya stress tinggi, you punya anxiety tinggi But it's not a final yet So, 
just it just has some um, ideas that the person might have um, symptoms and they could for the past two weeks. So then we kita can continue with assessment and tackle to that area. Contohnya kalau dia punya anxiety, contohnya kalau dia punya anxiety tinggi, kita akan bagi assessment specific for anxiety seperti back anxiety is uh, back anxiety inventory BAI lah. So BAI tu kita akan tengok, kita akan tengok based on the results. Okay, kalau tinggi, then kita akan go forward with either treatment plan ataupun um, kita akan correct more details lah from the from the patient or from the client. So basically, dekat situ juga kita akan tengok sama ada dia punya symptoms tu adakah meet the criteria tak? Sebab kita orang actually ada kita orang menggunakan uh, satu buku ni dipanggil DSM-5 Diagnostic Statistic Manual. Uh, Ima kita orang akan guna tu untuk kita orang refer criteria of each condition. So, lepas tu, diorang tengok lah, okay, this, this patient actually meet the criteria 6 over 7, you know, 3 over 7. So, from there, kita dapat tahu macam, okay, dia memang tunjuk, uh, dia memang ada symptoms of anxiety or maybe social anxiety dan sebagainya lah. So, daripada sini, you boleh nampak that excessive anxiety dengan worry, apprehensive expectations, dia kena occurring more days, more days than not for at least 6 months. Okay? So, kalau perasan juga, if you guys have done DAS 21 before, kalau korang perasan dia punya uh, introduction, dia akan tanya untuk korang uh, observe two weeks punya emotions. Kalau korang notice lah, two weeks punya emotions, sebab kita nak tengok those two weeks lah. Okay? So, it could be a number of activities atau events seperti sekolah ke, uh, work performance ke, or relationships ke, or family punya relationships ke. And then, one thing about psychological condition, it always starts from your childhood. Hmm. So, dia akan start daripada childhood. Sebab tu, childhood is very, very important. Hmm. Childhood sangat, sangat important sebenarnya. Sebab, if you notice, most of the memories that you remember, semua daripada childhood. And daripada childhood tu, kita akan, daripada childhood tu, dia akan create who you are during the adulthood punya transition. So, that could be your punya perspective, your punya apa, how you see life and how you adapt to certain situations. So, childhood memang plays a role in your adulthood lah. Okay? But not to say that 100% is childhood tak ada lah. So, one of the few factors adalah childhood. Alright? So, symptoms may start during childhood, then teenage years, lepas tu dah akan continue in, into adulthood. Sebab tu, it's important for us to tanya our client or patient, oh, during childhood, is there anything happen? If you remember any apa, significant event that happened during your teenage period, so benda-benda tu sangat penting untuk kita orang, untuk kita orang macam discover more about the patient lah. Okay? And then, uh, one of the most example yang saya boleh bagi is uh, kalau symptoms start during childhood, usually, contoh eh, this is very contoh. Contohnya macam uh, masa kecil, um, you dimalu, contoh lah, um, the individual dimalukan di halayak orang ramai and benda tu affected her or him so much. So, dia akan bawa during, dia akan bawa sampai teenage years. So, during teenage years tu, dia mungkin akan develop some sort of social anxiety. Tak nak cakap dengan orang. Um, ataupun dia tak nak keluar. Ataupun bila dia jumpa orang, dia tak nak dia, Bila dia jumpa orang, dia tak kenal, dia tak nak. You know? And then, benda tu kalau dia tak tackle during tackle, uh, teenage years, dia akan terus semua bawa ke apa? Ke um, adulthood lah. Uh, so, benda-benda macam tu kita akan tengok the timeline of it. Alright? So, the symptoms memang start during, might start during your childhood. Alright? So next is what are the common symptoms. So the reason why I said common is because anxiety punya symptoms ni dia banyak, dia besar. So I'm just gonna generalize kan what are the common symptoms yang we all might feel it. Tapi kita tak sedar, maybe kita sedar. So one of it is kita akan rasa nervous. Sangat-sangat nervous. We feel on the edge and kita akan rasa overstimulated. So setelah tu you akan rasa you boleh dengar your own heart pumping and then tangan you tiba-tiba sejuk and then you akan rasa tiba-tiba macam uh, the, the crowd is too loud and then macam it annoys you in some ways. So that's overstimulated lah. And then next is easily fatigue. So you akan rasa sangat penat. Macam you don't even you don't even know why you are tired. Tapi you akan rasa penat. Easily fatigue lah. It's different dia rasa penat dengan fatigue. Fatigue dia macam tak dapat langsung pun. Macam nak baring je. And then bila you rasa fatigue, you dah tak ada rasa nak buat benda-benda yang you suka dahulu. And then next is you akan develop panic attacks lah. You can experience panic attacks or a strong sense of impending danger, death or doom lah. So you can that you can start experience panic attacks and when it happen um, recurrently even uh, recurrently happen lah. So that kalau benda terjadi that falls under another anxiety punya type which is panic. Alright. So next is uncharacteristic irritability. Macam saya cakap tadi, orang rasa annoyed with all everything lah. Orang tak nak disturb kenapa orang rasa annoyed. 
And then next is uh, muscle tension. If you notice, bila korang tengah stress, korang punya shoulder akan stiff, betul tak? And korang punya neck akan sangat-sangat keras. Dan korang akan rasa macam apa cancer ke? Ibu sakit kan? Uh, macam tu kan? Actually, funny enough, I experienced this before tau. Uh, I think few days ago, sebab so, I was really really stressed with work. So, I do actually feel the muscle tension on my neck. So, I rasa macam, oh my god, kenapa tense sangat ni kan? Macam ni. So, this kind of symptoms and you're going to be aware. So, that is your body giving you uh, nudging macam, hey, hey, you, you're not okay right now, you're not okay, you know? Maybe macam tu. So, muscle tension, other than that, korang akan rasa nausea, korang akan rasa kita muntah, korang akan develop headache lah, sedikit kepala lah. And then, korang, ada some people sebenarnya dia rasa nak tak demam. <coughs> dia rasa nak demam. So, those one of the symptoms as well lah. And then, one thing about anxiety as well, dia akan affect you punya um, quality of sleep. So, it's either you tak boleh tidur langsung atau you tidur lama sangat. So, it's not in between lah. Okay, so usually um, bila kita overthinking, uh, for example, macam uh, paling senang yang kita boleh semua relate is actually to results. Okay? <coughs> so, bila kita tunggu results, contoh results sebenarnya keluar hari Jumaat, you akan rasa start sekarang dah. You akan rasa macam, oh my god, aku fail ke? What happens kalau aku fail? Aku nanti mak ayah aku cakap, nanti kalau kawan aku masuk kelas lain, aku masuk kelas apa, macam mana, you know, those kind of things lah, the expectations dan sebagainya. So, you akan start rasa benda tu. Slow, 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 sampai Kamis, Kamis malam Jumaat tu, you dah start nak tidur, you akan start rasa nak muntah, you tak rasa macam nak makan dan sebagainya lah. Alright? And then, rapid or irregular heart rate. So, jantung yang akan laju sangat-sangat. So, to one extent, you akan rasa macam, okay, aku ni pergi jogging ke, pernah tidur je benda macam tu. And then inability to uh, to be and still calm. So during difficult times, sangat susah untuk korang stay calm. Sebab time tu macam korang tengah in the in the in the mood macam, you know, survival mode macam try to stay, you know, stay, stay okay that time. So memang susah untuk korang stay calm lah. Alright. So what are the common warning signs of anxiety? It's quite similar macam the symptoms. But this is more like a, what are the red flags lah, I would say. Red flags of um, the anxiety. Macam korang boleh tengok red flags of partner kan? Relationship kan? So what are the red flags of anxiety? So one of it is actually worrying and feeling guilty without knowing exactly why. Korang perasan tak bila korang cerita ke uh, korang? Ya, perasan aku ni lah ni 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 ni. So bila macam korang tanya, oh kenapa cerita lah? Macam entah, tak tahu. But I just feel this way. Bila macam tu. And then even when you guys, when you try to describe to, to yourself Apa yang orang rasa pun orang macam apa rasa ni yang tak tahu But I feel very, very nervous, I feel very anxious, I don't know what to feel, I'm very overwhelmed No, benda macam tu And then uh, lack of interest in the people and things that you once value Macam tadi lah saya cakap, uh, bila contoh you used to like painting, you used to like um, going for a jogging Tiba-tiba you tak suka dah benda semua, you don't macam I don't want to do that anymore I prefer to stay at home, I tak nak buat apa, I don't want to see people No, benda macam tu sangat-sangat uh, crucial sebab every time I jumpa my patient, I akan tanya, dulu you suka buat apa? Oh, dulu saya suka buat yoga. Do you still do it now? Oh, I tak buat. So, aku tanya, kenapa dia tak buat? I don't feel like it anymore. So, I can take take that very seriously. I can macam, oh, is anything happen yang buat you tak suka yoga? So, benda-benda macam tu penting sebenarnya. Hyperventilation, sweating and trembling. So, you can rasa macam you nak pingsan. You akan rasa macam you nak apa, uh, your hands punya pump akan sweaty Ataupun your heartbeat akan so fast, you know And then avoidance behaviour lah You can find the reasons to avoid things that trigger your anxiety So things like macam you avoid your forum, you avoid the events You avoid pergi uh, benda-benda macam like kifi-kifi yang you suka dulu uh, Benda tu you akan avoid So these are the common signs Oh, ada lagi So, failing to thrive in your home life or career So, ini pun sama juga So, that's when bila everything feels like crumbling down uh, So, those are the signs lah that you have to be to be aware of And then, um, sebenarnya when it comes to psychological condition It always affects you punya um, physical condition sebenarnya So, one of it is gastrointestinal issues lah So, usually akan akan relatekan dengan um, If I'm not wrong, siapa-siapa medic students Please correct me if I'm wrong Macam girl atau apa kan uh, Bloater, rasa bloater dan sebagainya And then, uh, trouble concentrating Korang tak boleh fokus langsung dalam kelas ke Tengah lepak ke Even korang tengah tengok wayang ke Tengah workout ke Korang tak boleh fokus langsung Sebab your mind is everywhere And you are so so overwhelmed with it 
and eating or sleeping too much or even not enough. Sebab ada some people, dia punya coping mechanism dia adalah makan. Makan, 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 makan. Nothing wrong with that actually. But it gets unhealthy kalau begitu affects you punya health. So that is where we draw a line. Usually, I tak akan pernah seorang buat apa yang dia suka. I macam, okay, buatlah apa yang dia suka. Dia suka, dia suka pergi pada hutan, go, go for it. If, if it makes you happy, go for it. Tapi, I akan bagi tahu kalau you memanjat hutan, time hujan, that's where you draw a line. So, itu maksud saya. So, I would say that coping mechanism by eating is bad. No, it's also good. Oh, yo, da, do. So, eating is good juga. So, but it, some people, eating is rewarding. Going, going for a cafe, after dessert, or bila korang go through like a stressful week, if you look forward to makan something macam uh, makan sakwe ke, menti ke, that is rewarding, kan? Eh? Itu tak apa. Tapi it starts unhealthy bila you binge eating banyak-banyak-banyak-banyak-banyak video. So that is when I'm unhealthy lah. Sleeping too much pun sama juga. So some people they like, they, they macam sleep too much, tak nak, tak nak bangun. So bila kawan dia macam ajak lepak, dia macam tak nak mesti, you know. So now that we know what are the common types and what are the red flags of anxiety, then we might be thinking, so what's next? Apa dia punya types of anxiety? Sebenarnya, banyak. Dia macam, uh, when it comes to psychological function, uh, psychological disorders, dia bukan setakat satu saja. Dia akan, dia akan ada pair with another condition as well. So, contoh macam, if somebody has depression, they might have anxiety. So, uh, some people have, um, let's say, so let's say um, autism, kids on the spectrum, they would develop anxiety as well, just separation anxiety. So, we see that there is some two condition together with the other condition. So, two types of anxiety, I just have to ask them, six, that one is the name, so six. So, one of it is generalized anxiety disorder, I think about it as a And then, next is panic disorder, so that is what was the panic attacks. So, recurrence panic attacks can, can become a panic disorder. Alright, then so anxiety disorder, I think it's about it as social phobia. And then specific phobia, so just some people, they takut dengan ketinggian, takut dengan laba-laba, takut dengan apa, pula. Uh, ada banyak lagi types of um, phobia yang they experience, so they, 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 they rasa lah. Selective mutism is actually very interesting for me. Sebab, if selective mutism can be very tricky sebab apa, I ada satu client um, dia dalam umur 6 tahun ke 6 tahun lebih macam tu so when the parents him, uh, bila parents dia bawa jumpa saya, parents dia cakap she was very talkative, she's very talkative at home, dia boleh bercakap dengan uh, abang dia, dia boleh even play storytelling dengan abang dia dia boleh have that two way communication dengan parents dia so in the beginning orang akan rasa macam she might have autism sebab dia dia tak nak communicate and then dia tak nak pandang you she, uh, she avoids eye contact with me and then when I ask questions, dia tak nak jawab, dia diam so as the first impression, I rasa macam okay, kenapa dia tak nak jawab I? tapi mak dia cakap, dia boleh jawab dengan mak dia cakap dekat rumah, dia boleh berborak, dia boleh you know have storytelling, you know like a typical typical kids so then when I when I correct, 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 correct dengan parents dia dalam dalam dua-tiga sesi juga lah, correct, I found out actually dia memang ada selective mentism so selective mentism ni sebenarnya um, some sort of like social anxiety to kids but it started from the kids so dia rasa segan dengan orang, dia tak nak bercakap dia akan, dia akan pilih siapa je dia nak bercakap and then sometimes orang akan rasa macam dia ni mute ke sebab dia diam ya, yeah. so tu dia kategorize as selective mentism lah okay, that's very interesting lah sebab in the beginning kalau korang tak tahu korang akan rasa macam dia mute ke kan okay. Tapi sebenarnya tak, you just malu Okay, something happens in the past yang buat dia nak cakap dengan orang ramai ke apa kan uh, So, second is separation anxiety disorder And usually it starts from the children lah, from kids The amount of kids yang saya lupa Dengan special dengan separation anxiety ni sangat-sangat banyak And it's very very difficult And memang, honestly, ya memang kesian pada parents lah Sebab parents tak nak buat apa Sebab the child will cling on them uh, So, usually separation anxiety ni, it starts from children lah Okay, so selective mutism dengan special anxiety is memang start from children and you can, you can go to the clinic, you know, good lah. So now let's go through each one of the types of anxiety. Panjang kan? Hmm. Masa saya buat slide semua aku, saya macam macam mana aku cakap ni? Okay, so let's go one by one. Kita go through with 
um, generalized anxiety disorder (GAD). So untuk GAD, sekalinya uh, individuals akan ada experience chronic and excessive worry about various aspects of their life, seperti kerja, relationships, life as a whole, segala benda. Okay? And then um, benda tu akan jadi disproportionate to the actual source of the concern. Maknanya dia macam tak keluar daripada apa yang difikirkan tu. Contohnya macam kalau dia fikir pasal life, nanti kita boleh fikir pasal lain pula. Uh, so that's GAD lah. Okay? And then a second one is adalah panic disorder. So it's actually categorized uh, categorized by recurrent and unexpected panic attacks. So dia akan jadi macam kita akan tanya, okay, dalam seminggu berapa kali you ada panic attacks? Ni kita akan tanya, okay, uh, you uh, you kena tiga kali dalam seminggu, okay, dalam uh, satu hari berapa lama, uh, berapa lama duration, intensity of the feeling tu? Ah, uh, pada situ kita akan tanya lah, okay? And then dia akan ada dia akan ada intense episode. So mini macam Usually, kalau orang first time rasa panic disorder, the next time dia akan sangat-sangat takut sebab dia akan, dia akan rasa macam dia akan kena lagi dan benda tu akan lagi buat dia sangat takut. Lagi takut dan takut. Ha, macam itulah. Okay, and then people with panic attacks uh, atau panic disorder, they selalu risau pasal future lah. Okay, and then it may develop anxiety about being in situations where escape might be difficult. Salah satunya adalah um, I used to have a patient yang sangat takut dengan driving sebab dia ada experience while driving. So, every time drive, bila saya tanya dia macam, okay, when you drive, apa yang you takut, apa yang you fikir, cakap, oh, what if I get into an accident? Dia tanya, okay, pernah jari vehicle sebelum ni? Saya tahu tak pernah, but I have seen before. So, dia akan cerita lah, ni, 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 semua. So, not only that, bukan setakat driving, kalau macam tempat-tempat yang uh, bila dia tak drive, tapi dia dekat traffic jams pun, walaupun dia tak drive pun, dia takut juga. So, usually the, the feeling akan get more intense lah. Alright? So next is adalah uh, social anxiety disorder atau kita panggil as social phobia lah. So it involves an intense fear of social situations and the fear of being judged. Ah, uh, bangun bangun bangun. <laughs> okay, so uh, it involves an intense fear of social situations and the fear of being judged or embarrassed. So you are kira macam okay, I'm going to I'm going to give a speech in front of people. Uh, what if kalau Um, I salah cakap ke, what if I take a lead ke, I takut what if people think that I'm stupid, what if people think that I'm not qualified enough for this, so benda-benda macam tu lah. Okay, and then it can also cause significant distress and it will lead to avoidance of social interactions. So tadi ustaz saya saya cakap kan, sometimes bila korang ada anxiety, korang akan avoid the situation. So this is it lah. Uh, tapi not to say that you have social anxiety, tak? Maksudnya macam, Uh, when it comes to social situations, you akan cuba sedaya kudus dan upaya untuk avoid. And research actually shows that um, usually orang yang ada um, orang yang ada personality introverts usually akan ada social anxiety. But not all that, just research saja. But research shows memang um, individuals with uh, in, uh, who are introverts, orang mungkin akan ada social anxiety. Alright. So next adalah uh, specific phobia. Macam saya cakap tadi lah. Ada some people takut of heights, takut of flying, takut of um, spider. But it's different than takut and fear tau. Takut is takut. Fear is memang you blank. Macam when you're in that situation, you blank. You don't know what You don't have any and sebagainya. So it's excessive and irrational fears of specific objects. Um, animals ke, situations ke, or even activities macam bungee jumping ke, you know. Uh, ataupun some people actually scared of flying because of the heights. That could be one of it as well. Alright, so next, we oh yeah, are and water, ocean. Kan, bila korang dekat atas laut kan, you guys don't know what's beneath you guys kan. So, benda macam tu lah. So, next is um, selective mutism. Macam saya cakap tadi lah, macam saya explain. So, usually uh, people with selective mutism are more likely to be diagnosed with other anxiety disorders as well, seperti GAD ke, social ke, or special anxiety. And last one is actually a separation anxiety disorder lah. Uh, so, usually typically occurs in children and then boleh persist into your adulthood. Alright, and it involves excessive fear or distress when separated from attachment figures. So, pretty much like some kids, dia orang takut nak pergi sekolah sebab dia orang takut what if my dia orang pinggal dia orang nak pergi sekolah aku tak extend and usually benda tu akan slowly dia akan develop dia orang ada OCD lah usually untuk itu dia orang ada OCD 
uh, saya pernah dapat kes, saya juga kes lah macam actually my lecturer told me dia pernah ada satu patient yang budak dia mana nangis tak nak pergi sekolah so macam bila mak dia sampai bawa pergi ustaz takut ada hantu ke apa kat sekolah kan and then bila mak dia bawa pergi jumpa lecturer saya um, mak, uh, bila berorak-orak kembali tu, orang tu boleh berorak so bila orang dia cakap macam, oh saya takut kalau saya pergi sekolah mak saya pergi kan um, macam tu so usually kita akan tanya lah macam oh Pernah jahat apa, anything happen before this Kenapa kita tiba rasa macam tu, so boleh macam tu lah Alright So next is a, is something that you akan tanya diri you So now we know what is anxiety What are the common signs and uh, warning signs of anxiety And what are types of anxiety So now you might be wondering then how come an individual can develop an anxiety Sebab so, one day you boleh nampak Typical person macam okay, the next day you boleh nampak macam kita tak okay And you akan fikir macam, kenapa dia macam tu? Ada benda jadi ke? Dia boleh break dengan boyfriend dia? You akan rasa dia pula. Ah, tapi sebenarnya ada ada underlying issues yang terjadi dia. Put trigger the anxiety itself. Or high tenang the anxiety itself. So, macam saya cakap tadi, anxiety ni is a common and normal human emotion. So, memang semua orang ada. I ada anxiety, you know, I rasa nervous, you know, I rasa anxious Macam bagi talk sekarang, you know, or pergi somewhere new that I tak tahu I do feel anxious and nervous as well, so it's very normal Tapi dia akan jadi problematic kalau you dah interfere lah You punya daily functions dan well-being So, all yang I cakap MD, and all yang I cakap tadi ni I akan tanya balik tau, sebab benda ni repetitive Sebab I want you to remember that Perbezaan normal anxiety and unhealthy, I would say unhealthy <coughs> anxiety lah. So the key word here adalah bila dia interfere, you bring daily function dengan you punya well-being. Alright? So now, what are the factors for any individual can develop an anxiety? So definitely stress. So stress yang berpanjangan lah. Sebab kita semua akan encounter stress every day in our daily life. Um, even macam cooking new food, kita nak start masak benda baru pun kita akan stress macam tu tak aku buat ni kan? Ha, macam tu. So, tapi excessive and unresolved stress yang boleh increase an individual's putting chances of developing chronic anxiety. So that's the key word of that lah. Okay. The next factor adalah genetic factors. So, if someone in your family, family members, could be direct or indirect family members, ada um, any psychological disorder, one of his anxiety, there is possibility yang um, any individual itself boleh ada anxiety as well. Contohnya, uh, research actually shows if um, moms have anxiety, they can pass down to anak dia. Hmm. So that's where the hereditary theory comes in lah. The genetic factors comes in. Tapi it's not 100% tau. It's not to say macam, oh, mak you ada anxiety and you ada anxiety. <coughs> okay. It could be one of the factors that yang trick yang macam boleh tekan, macam-macam lah pun tekan that anxiety lah. Okay. And then other than genetic factors, social and economic factors juga play a role Macam you know during pandemic, orang buang tak ada kerja, tak ada income That could be one of the factors as well And even uh, macam saya cakap tadi lah, growing evidence suggests that genetic feature pun play, play, uh, play a role as well So next is the past or childhood experiences At least I had mentioned pasal the symptoms might develop during childhood kan eh? It's one of the factors So, could be your past experiences, traumatic events that happened during the past, and then um, uh, apa? childhood yang childhood yang buat you sedih, difficult childhood I would say, and even difficult adolescence time as well. It's actually a common trigger for anxiety lah. Okay, and then going through a stress and trauma during your very very young, um, likely for you to have anxiety as well. Yes, but remember when I say anxiety ni atau any psychological condition, dia macam dia sikit, 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 dia besar, dia macam tu. Alright? Then is the cognitive factors. So this is the fun part comes in. Sebab when it comes to cognitive, you tak nampak. And orang lain tak nampak. Ah, so you nampak. Okay, so cognitive factors. One thing I like about human mind is that our mind works differently. I can think of A, you guys might be thinking of A1, A2, A3, A4 Some people might think of B, C, D, E and F and G And then one thing that, and then one question yang saya akan tanya Macam mana korang boleh start fikir B, C, D, E and F and I fikir pasal A It's different upbringing 
how we see or how we see life. I see life from A to Z. Some people see life B and D. Boleh macam tu lah. So this is where cognitive factors comes in. So anxieties can stem from cognitive patterns and interpretations. So negative self-talk, things like I'm stupid, I can never do this, I'm not a good daughter, I'm not a good boyfriend, I'm not a good student, my mom hates me, this is why people hate me, negative self-talk. Catastrophizing ataupun perfectionism contribute to anxiety, meaning macam um, academic pressure. You see, contohnya macam abang you, kakak you, adik you dapat straight A's, you akan rasa pressure untuk dapat straight A's juga sebab adik-adik you dapat straight A's. And then, unrealistic expectations lah. Things like macam, um, oh, I can make sure I can dapat, uh, I can dapat kereta punda by by end of this month, you know, unrealistic expectations. So, kereta kan adds up to the stress, to the anxiety as well. And this is the physical and psychological condition. So, physical health, seperti thyroid and heart, um, <coughs> heart issues pun boleh jadi boleh trigger the anxiety as well. And other mental health, macam saya cakap tadi, uh, kalau ada A, you misalnya B, or you misalnya C atau D, or either one of it. So, other mental health problems, and it's also very common untuk an individuals to develop anxiety while living with other mental health problems, seperti depression. So usually kalau kalau you perasan, kan? The reason kenapa kita screen dust, it could be one of it. Ataupun dua, ataupun tiga-tiga. Hmm. Sebab so, kalau you ada depression, kalau you ada anxiety, most likely you akan ada depression. Sebab so, tu kita akan, kita akan rule out every possibilities that we can. Kalau macam a patient comes to me, cakap dia ada anxiety, I akan buat semua screening. Sebab so, I akan rule out dia memang tak ada depression, dia memang tak ada ni, dia memang tak ada tu, dia memang ada ni je. Uh, Bila macam tu important lah. Okay? So far, anyone has any questions tak? While I'm drinking water. Kalau you mampu, pergi private. Kalau you rasa macam 
financial difficulty, go for government. But at the same time, I will bagi you supplementary uh, activity untuk you cope dengan apa yang you rasa. Usually, awak macam pula. Okay? Kalau macam betul-betul strict budget lah. So, that's government punya flow of it. Uh, sebenarnya ada banyak list mana-mana hospital yang korang boleh pergi even in Jawapai juga Saya tak saya tak sure uh, I think korang macam Google lah pasal saya kan okay. Sangat tak helpful dan saya ni saya pun nak letak dia punya list of Tempat kat Jawapai yang sorry my dad Tapi kalau private, okay, private is very straightforward You pergi mana-mana center, psychological center Cakap yang unfit, ya, you book an appointment And then you cakap that you're feeling this way dah 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 Dekat bagi, dia akan assign you with the therapist and sometimes you will choose your own therapist Macam for example, saya promote sikit eh, saya punya tempat kerja, Minda Kami So Minda Kami, you boleh pergi to the website and then you boleh pilih satu therapist you nak So the good thing about, the good thing about private uh, center, you boleh buat online juga So you don't have to go physical lah, you boleh buat online juga So you boleh book siapa-siapa therapist you nak and then You boleh pilih slot, you nak pilih malam ke, lapar malam ke, sembilan malam ke Sebab sesi selalunya akan akan last for one hour 15 minutes lah, one hour lah, 50 to one minute 50 minutes to one hour And then after that, orang akan bagi you link untuk you apa For your online interview, kalau kau uh, online session If it's not, then akan bagi tahu lah Okay, from this particular day, you boleh jumpa and then ada semua tu Okay, but Walaupun straightforward, cepat, pantas dan sebagainya The downside of it of private centers sangat mahal. Satu sesi only for sesi is 200 plus. It can go up, it can go all the way up. Kan? Kan kan? Right, you know right? Yeah. Itu baru sesi tau. So I'm gonna assessment. Assessment is another thing. Lebih mahal. Yeah. So that's something about private and government lah. Kalau ada some people yang boleh, yang mampu, dia akan pergi private Ada yang kalau some yang tak boleh, dia akan pergi government I think now NGO pun dah ada, you know Free, free tele consultation, tak selesai lah Macam befrienders kan That is helpful as well lah Right in the meantime dan sebagainya So usually that's the flow of it Kalau macam like an official macam tu But kalau yang macam family members Atau kita punya best friends ke itu pun boleh jadi one of, one of our ways to support help as well Sebab kawan kita boleh bawa pergi klinik ke kan Kawan kita boleh jadi uh, a place for us to you know Share things ke dan sebagainya Alright so now I want to talk about coping skills Saya pernah dengar pasal coping skills before Pernah dengar tak? Present moment, and then it helps you to have a sense of calm as well. 
So tu yoga macam aku tarik nafas, slow, ada ada buku-buku yang korang kena follow dan sebagainya. It's not only, it's not only just yoga lah. Ada juga meditation in terms of baca buku, you know, baca novel dalam bilik, fire time, that could be fine and that could be uh, part of the mindfulness and meditation as well. Alright? Cognitive restructuring. So, cognitive restructuring is when you do it, firstly, you will do it with the therapist. Lepas tu, you akan practice, you can incorporate that activity into daily life. So, seperti uh, challenging the negative and anxious thoughts um, by giving the evidence. So, ada some people, they are very evidence-based kind of person. Macam kalau you borak, kalau you cakap just macam tu, dia takkan percaya sampai you. Oh, kalau you main, kalau you macam pala tau sikit, you bagi facts kan, dia macam Uff, betul eh, betul eh Tapi kalau you macam eh, eh, itu dia takkan percaya you So, some people, dia memang memang very hold into facts Like, uh, for example, I think this is very classic facts ah. Macam kalau orang takut dengan kapal terbang, orang akan counter back Do you know that kapal terbang is one of the safest transportation, betul tak? That kind of facts, macam tu uh, Macam tu helps people to macam Tukarkan balik cara dia orang fikir macam, oh yeah, that's correct so that is challenging um, negative negative thoughts. Lah. I would say unhealthy thoughts lah, atau unhelpful thoughts. Not not negative lah, unhealthy thoughts. Okay. And then uh, kita akan replace the unhealthy atau unhelpful thoughts to a thoughts yang very more helpful. Uh, please uh, uh, ignore the positive thoughts. It's not supposed to be there. Tapi it's supposed to replace with helpful thoughts. Um, Saya dulu masa saya buat thesis, saya buat thesis pasal positive psychology tau So when I first tell people that I'm doing positive psychology, they akan cakap So you are a positive person lah, sebab you got positive psychology Actually positive psychology is not about being positive tau Have you guys heard of toxic positivity before? So toxic positivity is when you um, when you're too positive and it's, it becomes unrealistic. So things that macam kau yang tengah sedih ya, contoh kau yang tengah sedih memang memang legit sedih lah. Dia macam eh, be be positive. <laughs> you know those kind of things kan? Eh? Dia macam bila tengah nangis tu, tengah panik kan? Eh? Dia kau yang macam be think of the good side of it. You know life is all about sunshine. Kau boleh sedih. That is toxic positivity. You akan rasa macam, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Or you akan rasa macam, I want to talk to you sedih, aku lagi sedih. So that is toxic positivity. I used to be, if I'm being really honest, I used to be toxic positive as well. So bila my best friend come to me, macam, Mimi, I think I'm sad, sebab I don't know what can I. Dia macam, babe, positive vibes only, babe. And that's why my best friend called me out, macam, you know, good friend. And sometimes you need that friends, man. You need that friend. You need that friends that calls you out for your for your that that behavior lah. Ah, uh, that kind of friend, eh? Okay. So when it comes to helpful thoughts and unhelpful thoughts, kerana kita sudah always nanya about kita boleh nak differentiate the unhelpful dengan helpful thoughts. I selalu bagi analogy. I selalu main dengan analogy. I suka analogy. So I rasa analogy helps people to see the to see the situation even more clear from a different different areas. So, for example, if you notice kan, bila you drive, you got pasal radio. Kenapa you pasal radio? It's either you tak nak sunyi sangat dalam kereta, ataupun you just nak macam ada, macam ada sound background sound kan, betul tak? Even when you study as well, betul tak? Kan? Okay. Do you notice bila lagu yang you suka, you akan nyanyi? Kan? Kan you akan nyanyi? Macam example, you tengah pakai make up kan? You cakap, I love you, best after you nyanyi. Tapi kalau lagu yang tak, bila lagu yang tak suka, you akan ignore, betul tak? That's how our mind works. So, how do you define helpful thoughts? Macam mana kita nak define helpful thoughts? Macam mana kita nak define unhelpful thoughts pula? Sebab kaya yang masih dapur, benda itu macam This is not helpful for me Benda macam itulah So, things like negative self-talk, you know Things yang can bring you down even more So, that is unhelpful Or when you think about something yang belum jadi lagi Contoh ni macam you think about the future Tak jadi lagi sebenarnya Tapi you dah so worry about it So is it helpful for you? Does it help you to go through every day? Tak So that is unhelpful thoughts But what are helpful thoughts? Helpful thoughts is bila you put effort untuk study You akan buat plan kan? 
hari ni aku nak buat ni, aku nak buat ni, aku nak buat ni eh aku ada uh, assignment ni, 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 ni semua those are helpful thoughts because that helps you to be more proactive and productive and it helps you a lot, betul tak? so boleh macam tu lah, ok? alright, next is relaxation techniques lah so usually things lah macam kita guna visualis- uh, vis- visualization uh, guided imagery and then kita akan guna music lah to promote relaxations yang boleh helps to reduce anxiety next is social support so social support is very important actually so I selalu tanya my client you are your best friend tak? atau somebody yang you rapat atau family members yang you trust uh, so benda ni akan tanya sebab social support plays one of the big roles in um, in treatment plans lah ok so things like macam trusted friends support groups macam dekat Facebook ada support groups kan so benda macam tu pun helpful juga sebab it helps us to you know share our feelings and we feel that we're not alone kan? and then it helps us to gain more perspective and kita akan rasa macam encourage encouragement so macam dia support kita, kita support dia, kita rasa lagi lagi you know lagi feel better dan sebagainya time management ni sangat penting time management sebab bila you overwhelm ada idea apa dah macam all over the place ah, sebab tu time management is important so that this is where you kena tahu or uh, you kena organize task you and you kena be responsible sebab that could help to reduce feelings of overwhelm and it would help you to create a sense of control in yourself because sometimes when we feel anxious or overwhelmed kita akan rasa losing the sense of control of our body kan itu bukan kita jadi kita akan jadi lagi panik lah so when we do that it helps us to have a sense of control of our own activities the next one is limiting stressors lah okay so first to identify and limit the exposure to the stressors uh, and things that could trigger uh, that contribute to the anxiety seperti so excessive caffeine jangan minum air sakit caffeine <laughs> excessive caffeine certain environments and certain social situations lah okay alright next is what are the treatment plans so ada banyak sebenarnya treatment plans so I can go through one by one so first is assessment and diagnosis so tadi yang asyik kita tadi panjang-panjang lah so first kita buat kreatif interview dan sebagainya and then during the assessment and diagnosis it will be one to one so no one else in the room lah so it will be P and C very P and C and then kita akan uh, kita akan buat consultation kita akan tanya soalan kita akan buat assessment and then we will come out with diagnosis next is once we dah come up with the diagnosis kita akan set a goals with our patient or client what do you want to focus first so this is where psychotherapy comes in so one of the psychotherapy yang helps untuk anxiety is adalah cognitive behavioral therapy so CBT ni sebenarnya if you notice kita akan fikir dulu and it will affect our behavior and our action in daily life contoh uh, contoh you masuk kelas uh, lepas tu you say hi to everyone kan of all the days satu hari tu kawan you tak tak, tak menyahu langsung hi you kawan diam je and you start over thing you macam did I do something wrong or did I say something bad benda macam tu you akan start to think you akan you akan uh, you akan start to overthink and benda tu akan affect you punya behaviour you akan start rasa panik, you akan start rasa risau you akan start rasa anxious, you akan tak nak cakap dengan orang, you akan serabut and then the consequences is either you akan you know menangis ke, lari masuk bilik ke ataupun you tak nak cakap dengan orang ke so this is what they believe that cognitive comes first cognitive behaviour, cognitive then behaviour alright and exposure and responses prevention lah this is to address anxious thoughts behaviors and then to develop effective coping strategies as well so tu I letak I letak pasal coping skills as well so I want to be juga next is medication so bila dah out, bila macam we don't see any progress kita akan suggest for medication alright so I nak tanya what's the difference between psychiatrists and clinical psychologists sebab clinical psychologist can be a doctor as well 
and psychiatrist is also a doctor. So aku beza kita orang kedua ni. Macam Dr. Ahmad dengan Shalini. Oh, beza Dr. Ahmad dengan Shalini. So basically, we both can do the same thing. Cuma, I tak boleh nak provide medication. So, clinical psychologist, we can't provide medication. Tapi kita orang boleh buat benda yang sama macam psychiatrist buat assessment, diagnosis, treatment plan, psychoeducation, parental training, consultation, blah blah blah, semua kita boleh buat. Ha, cuma medication kita tak boleh buat. So when, it, so, when we feel, kalau kita rasa macam our client needs uh, medication, so kita akan buat brief report lah. Kita akan buat referral letter atau report. Kita akan beritahu dia, doktor, I have seen this patient for nine, for six months. Um, I have diagnosed her, dadah, dadah, dadah. Pada dadah, dadah, semua nanti dia akan, akan bagi dekat the patient. Patient pergi jumpa doktor, dia takkan tengok lah. What's the follow up after that? Hmm. So that's the difference between us lah. But we as a CP, kita mesti kena tahu apa medication yang helpful untuk our patient juga. Walaupun kita tak provide lah. So this for our knowledge purposes. So at least kalau patient datang ke I, tanya, oh I makan ubat ni, nanti dia dah macam pening-pening, orang sama, buat apa tu? At least I tahulah, orang sama, oh ubat tu sebenarnya. Lepas tak tahu, macam, oh ni ni lah. <laughs> Next is realization technique lah. Realization technique, and then gradual exposure. So usually gradual exposure ni untuk disorders yang macam uh, specific phobias, um, OCD, usually dia akan guna gradual exposure lah. So this is the most important part, regular review and adjustments. So being compliant, jumpa therapist every time appointment is important. Sebab time tu kita akan review, kita akan tengok ada apa progress tak? The techniques that kita bincangkan ada apa-apa tak changes. Kalau tak ada, let's find another techniques. Oh, you makan medications eh? Medications tu helpful tak untuk you? Cepat, oh tak helpful lah, the virus and anxious, no job, okay, let's see what we can do for that. Um, that's why it's important lah. So kalau you pergi jumpa terapi, kalau you pergi first session, second, three, four, first session tak pergi dah. And then you jumpa I balik. Then you cakap dengan I, I think it's getting bad. Uh, so benda macam tu kita nak avoid lah. So, but I do also see the the perspective from others as well sebab kadang-kadang busy kan, busy schedule. Kadang-kadang kita nak tak budget. So benda macam tu pun I akan take note juga. I usually, I akan tanya patient I, you nak ada follow up tak? Kalau tak ada follow up, this particular session, I akan terus bagi you coping skills atau teknik untuk you practice. Uh, so, you buat macam tu lah. Tapi kalau dia cakap dengan I, macam, oh, I can still see you, uh, dia akan slow-slow dengan you. Okay, tak apa, kita akan take one, one step at a time. Macam tu lah. Okay, next is actually case study. Ah, this is the fun part. So, this is Aisha. Kan nama sebenar She's a 21 years old Malaysian University student Who has been experiencing anxiety For the past few years She comes from a very competitive Academic background And she faces immense pressures To excel in her studies So Aisha's anxiety has started To affect her overall Well-being, relationships And academic performance so she feels the weight of societal expectations to succeed academically which adds more to her anxiety and it emphasizes on academic achievement and competition juga yang boleh create additional stress and pressure so when she feels anxious in the social settings particularly when meeting new people or participating in group activities they can avoid they can avoid social events and they can struggle to develop new friendships sebab dia takut kalau orang judge dia or, or even criticism The physical as the physical symptoms that she experience adalah frequent headaches, fatigue, muscle tensions due to chronic anxiety and dia punya, dia pun ada experience sleep disturbances and restlessness which affect dia punya ability untuk dapatkan rehat So not only that, she also feels overwhelmed, constantly on edge, and experiences persistent feelings of worry and irritability. And then she also ada negative self-talk, self-doubt that affect dia punya self-esteem as a well, whole, that lead to a sense of inadequacy. So based on this case um, study, Aisha, anyone of you can relate to Aisha? Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I do, I do relate that as well. Especially kalau when it comes to family expectation. And then it's on more into academic pressure. You know, sometimes kalau kita pergi beraya, pakcik, pakcik abu cakap, anak aku dah jadi engineer lah, aku jadi apa? Oh, macam tu. And you're kind of macam, oh man, I'm only first sem. Macam mana? Sampai jadi engineer pun first sem. Benda macam tu. Or even some pakcik comes to you. Uh, anak pakcik, dia pergi sekolah. Dia dapat straight A's. Oh, kuarta berapa? Uh, macam tu lah. So that pressure. So that pressure, benda-benda macam tu yang kita experience in our daily life. Kadang, kadang orang tak nampak sebab orang fikir macam Tak adalah, pakcik abu tu berborak je. Janganlah ambil hati. Ataupun tak adalah, makcik tu cuma nak motivate je. Nak motivate awak untuk belajar. But they don't know the effect of the long term, you know. M- mungkin sekarang kita tak rasa sebab kita rasa macam ah, you are Tapi bila kita nak ambil results, time tu lah kita rasa macam Alamak, aku dah jumpa pakcik abu nanti. Next raya, you know, tu tanya lagi aku ni result uh, So macam tu lah So other than that, other than tadi yang I cerita tu Aisyah From these stories Apa yang rasa Aisyah boleh buat as a coping skill still? Hmm. Dengan sleep So apa yang apa Aisyah boleh buat? Contoh lah Aisyah is your friend And then she tells you all this Why, why, uh, how would you How would you do it? Apa you boleh suggest? Meditation. Meditation. Other than that, thank you so much. Other than that, selain daripada meditation, apa yang kita boleh suggest dekat Aisyah? Selain daripada positive vibes only. Jangan cakap dengan Aisyah. Macam nak hamur ni. Apa lagi dia boleh buat? Social support, yes, social support. Other than, other than meditation, social support, and one thing that, that saya highlight juga tadi is the negative self-talk. Yeah. So, kita boleh suggest to Aisyah, mungkin macam uh, kita boleh talk to Aisyah and try to, you know, try to play around with how Aisyah sees things. So, usually, kita akan, usually therapist lah yang akan buat benda tu. Maybe what we can suggest is, okay, We want to see a therapist, kita boleh bawa juga therapist ke Kita meet ke apa, macam tu lah Or be there, be there for, be there for Aisyah Alright, banyak lagi sebenarnya So, but those are one of it lah Yang kita boleh discuss sama-sama Thank you so much Alright, so Alright, so kita ada lagi 20 ribu minit Okay. Next 
ada lah. What kind of what type of anxiety yang you experience sekali, and then it will happen again and again and again and again banyak kali, and you benda tu you akan takut sangat. Yes, body disorder. That's correct. Okay. Tahu, yes, that's right. Okay, okay, that's right. Tadi saya ada cakap lima factors, 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 lima factors that people, that individuals boleh jaga dari anxiety. Okay, stress is one of it. Genetic is one of it. Past and childhood is one of it. So what are the other two factors? Uh, 
Dan kalau aku rasa macam aku kalau aku rasa macam oh your symptoms are worsening ni bawa mail I bawa you to clinic lah I buat cukup doktor lah. Um I think I can also suggest me that. Okay. That's good. Right, so this is Aisha punya eh this is squeezes are habis. Siapa Google ni? Oh, 
Okay. Uh, is placebo is placebo a medication for anxiety? Placebo is an effect, sebenarnya. Yeah. So, dia macam uh, contoh lah. Contoh, you start. Siapa pernah tengok cerita House? House MD. Siapa tengok House MD? Ada tengok tak satu episode yang Mamat ni macam komplain sakit-sakit-sakit and then doktor tu macam tak apa ni so dia bagi gula-gula and dia bagi gula-gula and dia bagi tahu dia bagi tahu Mamat tu ni ubat so dia makan every day and dia okay so that's plus to be fat so kita macam bingung kita macam trick macam tu lah I could be wrong tapi rasa so, mungkin lah macam tu but that is plus to be fat lah okay Oh, I have a Hi, Dr. Mimi. Should I confess to him? Okay, jom kita buat relationship dengan talk sekarang ni. Okay. Uh, kepada, kepada A bukan nama sebenar. Dah berapa lama suka orang ni? Ujian stress, depression and anxiety dan ketiga-tiga menunjukkan level yang agak teruk Sometimes saya rasa takut sangat-sangat tapi saya tak boleh tahu orang lain Apa yang saya perlu buat So with the dust uh, result that you dapat tu, you boleh bawa to the nearest clinic or even a hospital Make sure you um, you screen screen cut your results The results tu bawa pergi klinik atau dok, atau hospital Tapi tahu this is the results that you take online Sebab saya rasa dust ni pun ada online Bahasa Melayu dan bahasa English betul tak? So the results yang dia bawa, dia tahu you boleh pergi jumpa doktor, cakap This is my results, I've been feeling this way and this way and this way Nanti dia akan refer you to the, to the, apa, to the um, psychiatrist atau counsellors or even CP lah Alright, but usually when it comes to personal punya, personal questions I rather not answer in front of everyone So I rasa I not protect that person So if there is any personal questions that you would like to ask me, come approach me Kalau boleh, saya akan jawab daripada ramai orang lah Ok, sebab I'm sure I want to, I want to like protect you guys as well So, kalau ada benda-benda yang cari personal Boleh jalan ke boleh datang, jumpa saya kejap lagi So, we can discuss about it, right? Ok What's next? Anxiety ni normal ke? Macam tadi, macam saya cakap tadi, anxiety ni normal Semua orang ada Tapi dia jadi, dia jadi dah, dia jadi tak normal is bila dia affects, bila dia function lah dengan our well-being Sejak pertama jumpa Haa oh, ni jawapan tadi, soalan tadi ke? Sejak pertama jumpa ni? Sebenarnya semua ada 
rasa I rasa serabut juga sebenarnya lah Okay, tak ada orang macam Oh, you look okay Means that you tak You tak stress Tak juga Some people just know how to mask Okay If I need to reach out to you Do I need to pay fee? Tak payah Serius tak payah So, if you need to reach out to me Just reach out to me Okay Tu sebentar solat lah dulu
Maksudnya jangan secara perempuan sebab you know kadang-kadang orang pusang-pusang dalam diri korang macam ni Sekian kena perempuan tu We are but saya kopi bibi out of habit That could be as well Hmm Kadang-kadang tak perasan pun sebenarnya jadi rutin jadi part of habit And to be honest saya pun kopi bibi juga dan dalam beg saya tu, ada tak besar ke sini Dalam beg saya So macam mana saya dah senang cukup nak Maybe saya akan letak tu But it could be out of habit as well lah Benda-benda macam tu Kalau terlalu handsome, dikira anxiety ke? Dikira anxiety? Saya handsome sangat kan? Dia rasa macam, oh tak boleh rasa ni, tak boleh sport, tak boleh kelas lah Kan semua orang nak aku ni Mereka jadi, mereka jadi, mereka jadi Sí, 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 sí.
Terima kasih diucapkan kepada Puan Syarimi binti Amiruddin di atas perkongsian yang pernah berimpak sebentar tadi. Semoga segala ilmu dan penerangan yang telah disampaikan dapat sama-sama kita terapkan di dalam diri supaya menjadi seorang mahasiswa yang lebih cemerlang pada masa yang akan datang. Teruskan lagi dengan menjemput yang dihormati Dr. Basarudin Shah bin Basri, Tindakan Rektor Hari Uang Pelajar, Universiti Tuan Jimara, Cawangan Jombor, diiringi oleh Ketua Besara Uju bin Pak Bin, Penolong Pendapat Kanan Kogrik Gelam dan Penasihat, Majlis Perwakilan Kemani Kesatria Bintin 6, Universiti Tuan Jimara, Cawangan Jombor, untuk menyampaikan sedikit cedera hati kepada Puan Syabimi Binti Amiruddin. Terima kasih diucapkan kepada Puan atas kesudian menerima cerita hati sebentar tadi. Seterusnya, majlis menjemput yang dikasihi saudara Muhammad Ashraf Aiman bin Muhammad Zaidi untuk memberi cerita hati kepada yang dihormati Dr. Basar bin Shah bin Basri, Timbalan Rektor Haiwa Pelajar Universiti Teknologi Mara, Cawangan Johor. Ucapkan kepada Dr. Basar Dei Syah bin Basri Atas kesulian menerima cinta hati sebentar tadi Sebelum majlis berakhir Para hadirin diminta untuk berdiri Bagi menyanyikan lagu UITM di hatiku
sampai sampai sini sampai sampai